Great. Um, well, please keep the comments coming. We're going to get dialed in now because it's 2.32 here in San Francisco. Um, again, welcome, welcome everyone. We're so excited to talk about um, values and how they come to life during times of uncertainty today. I'm going to jump in and quickly introduce our big panel of speakers. We're excited to have a ton of voices this time around, a lot of different perspectives um, from different industries. So I'll have our speakers go down the line and share a little bit about their role, what their company does, and what they're excited to share with you today. I'll turn it over to Josh. Welcome, Josh. Hi, I'm Josh Berman calling in from Oakland, California. I am Culture Amp's Culture Enablement Lead. I'll talk a little bit more about who Culture Amp is in a few moments, but um, my role is essentially to um, help uh, use Culture Amp's own platform to, to improve our culture and um, also to um, help bring our values to life. Great and, um, Great. and no, perfect. Go ahead. <laughs> I am I am Shannon Ferguson. I am the head of people at Blueboard, and um, I work closely with Morgan and also with Kevin, who are on the webinar with us. Um, and they will be telling you a little bit more about Blueboard in just a moment. So I, I will leave that for them. But um, generally, I'm really excited to talk about values because as a people person, you know, most of my day and most of the work that I do at Blueboard is really built on a foundation of our values. We try to infuse them through all of our people programs. And it's, um, you know, really my pleasure to share the panel with everybody else to learn from them about how they do that as well. Hi, Hi, everyone. Oh. Sorry, Laura, I completely cut you off. <laughs> it's okay. This is Laura May um, from Eleanor's Yogurt, the best yogurt in the universe. Um, calling in from Seattle, Washington. Um, I'm the HR leader. I'm excited to be in this call today um, to share with you all about what we're doing at Eleanor's and what makes it so special. Hi, now it's my turn. Uh, my name is Kevin Yip. I'm the CLO of Blueboard. You know, I'm excited to, to, to learn and, and hear from more of the panelists. Um, you know, I think businesses often think of, you know, creating systems and processes around kind of predictability. And when that predictability goes out the window, uh, what do you have to lean on? And, you know, I think values is really important. And so, yeah, excited to, uh, to tell you more about Blueboard and, and hear from the other panelists. Wonderful. Hi, everybody. I'm Tia Smith. I'm the VP of People Development at Collaborative Solutions. I'm out of Nashville, Tennessee. Um, Collaborative is a, a full service finance and HR transformation consultancy firm. I'll try and say that three times um, with just over a thousand employees. And so we have physical offices across the globe, but we also have a very large remote workforce. Um, and I was excited to be part of this panel in particular because of my involvement in refreshing and rebranding our corporate values at Collaborative about 18 months ago. So I'm very proud of how all of our employees have really stepped up to weave the values into the fabric of who we are and what we stand for and how we act, interact with other people. So I'm really excited to um, jump in and share my perspective today. Great, thank you so much, everyone. Um, so actually, yeah, as we jump into more about our, our sponsors, we will go through this quickly. Um, and we'll actually launch a poll as we're sharing a little bit about Blueboard and our partner Culture Amp, who's helping us to put on the content today. Um, if you are interested in learning more, you're welcome to uh, respond to the survey that's happening now on screen. So um, Blueboard, for those of you are, who are not familiar, um, we're all about meaningful experiences as rewards and recognition. So whether you're looking to power spot recognition programs, maybe to uh, really amplify those who are living your values during these times, uh, those who are going above and beyond, uh, anniversary programs, referral incentives, really any moment where you would otherwise maybe reward with cash or gift cards. Employees get to choose from a menu of either things like in-home experiences, which we just launched over the last few weeks, um, experiences like learning the art of calligraphy, learning a new language, or working with a mindful leadership coach, um, all the way through to really awesome bucket list adventures like taking flying trapeze lessons, um, hiking Machu Picchu, or other things that have been on your bucket list. So we partner with companies to bring that to life um, to really ultimately form stronger connections with their employees to help them do something that they wouldn't have otherwise had done um, had they had a, a normal monetary incentive presented to them. So as I mentioned, feel free to reach out on the poll if you'd like to learn more about Blueboard after this meeting. And I'll pass it over to Josh, who's going to share a little bit more about Culture Amp. 
All right, thank you. So at CultureAmp, we believe that intentionally putting your people in your culture first is the key to organizational success. And if you're gonna do that well, you have to really be able to listen to your employees and engage with them, help make sense of the information um, that you're getting from them to actually um, put them first. And so CultureAmp is the world's leading and longest running um, people and culture platform. Um, and we're also the first such platform that incorporates both performance feedback and reviews um, which enables organizations to connect the dots between engagement and, and that performance experience. Um, so, you know, especially in these times um, with, with COVID-19 and the challenges we're facing, it's even more important to be able to have those conversations on a regular basis. Awesome. Thank you so much, Josh. And thanks everyone who participated in our poll. Great. Um, so a quick agenda and some housekeeping before we turn it over to our speakers. Um, we just got through welcome and intros. Our first section will really be um, having Shannon talk us through why we're here today, why your value is the foundation um, for your employee experience, why are they so crucial now as we're facing um, and navigating new changes in our workforce. And um, from there, uh, we'll talk through how values come to life during uncertainty and times of change. This will be a great opportunity for um, each of our panelists to really peel back the onion on what our values look like, how we came to form them, and really how they're adapting and shifting um, in this new world that we're living in. And then lastly, um, what people programs have our panelists designed, um, whether existing programs that have been modified to really connect with our employees in the way that they need right now, um, new programs that have been rolled out to really create ease and certainty, or more certainty at least than some employees might have, to give more direction and really help bring our values to life. So that'll be a really fun uh, show and tell option. And as we're going through that content, we'd love to hear your own ideas as well. With regards to housekeeping items, um, Ken actually had asked earlier, are lines muted? Yes, you will be muted, but please leverage the chat feature to ask questions along the way. Um, we'll also have some questions that appeared from your registration form. We have about five or six that were submitted um, that we'll be covering as well during moments of the presentation. And we are recording this, which means if you do have to drop off early, we'll be having a full recap and recording on our blog next week. And lastly, for those of you um, looking out for the SHRM PDC credit, that will be available at the end of the presentation. Any other questions along the way, feel free to grab us on chat and Anna and I will uh, keep in touch with you. So jumping in, I'll pass it over to Shannon um, for our first section, Why Values Are Our Foundation. Sure. So um, I'm really excited to talk about values today because I feel like values um, for many of us HR leaders and um, just business leaders are really at the very core of how we operate. They create the foundation for the employee experience and they create alignment all across the business. We collectively rely on our values to guide our thinking, to help us with program development, and also to help us make decisions. Um, they also help us to establish shared priorities and um, shared language so that when we are talking about things that we are facing, we are able to turn to our values and use them as sort of a beacon to help us work through those things. So really they create this common understanding that ensures that our team is working well together and is guided by the same principles. I think, you know, as different companies develop their um, values, they may take different approaches and they may um, more heavily rely on different types of values. They may also use a blend of types of values to um, sort of build a value structure. But, um, you know, whether you are looking at values that are driving particular outputs or you are looking at values that perhaps describe behaviors that are important within your organization or, um, you know, building values that really define the types of um, interactions that you expect your employees to have with one another or with customers. The bottom line is that um, each of these sort of values and, and values definition exercises is around making an agreement. It's setting this common ground between employees and employers for, you know, what are we going to expect of one another as we work together? So I think 
as we talk about values and as the, this values conversation sort of evolves today, we'll say the word values a million times. And it's, it's easy to kind of like lose sight of, you know, what that really is. And for me, I, I think the simplest way to look at it is it's this handshake between employers and employees around their beliefs, their behaviors, their expectations, and the types of decisions that they'll be making. So while they may have different goals and aims and desires and intentions, in the end, as they approach all of those different things, values form this wonderful sort of, um, you know, deep understanding between the two of them as they approach those different things. Next slide. Um, great. So, um, sort of digging into that a little bit more deeply and kind of talking about the, the detail as to, you know, what values can do inside of the organization. I'll, I'll stay on the topic of Blue Board where, you know, our values are very human centered. And the idea of them is that they're really describing both what we expect of our team as people in their work and also, you know, what the team can expect from the organization in the way that we as people interact externally and the way that we interact internally. So I, I feel like I'm kind of like painting this very broad picture here <laughs> and um, uh, it would be helpful to see the values, but I'm all hype fan today. Kevin is going to actually go through the specific values. The idea is that when you are designing values, um, if you sort of think about the ways that they create an agreement, then you can sort of see the ways that you can put them into use. So um, they can serve as the building blocks of your employee experience, and there are all of these very specific touch points. Perhaps you will use your values during recruiting, and you will specifically seek candidates that have certain types of values that they show in, in their um, interview process. Or um, you can see them in your performance reviews. You will... Um, look for demonstrations of specific behaviors that are values oriented from employees. You may use values to build learning and development programs or also to recognize employees, high performers who demonstrate a value in a very specific way. Um, in addition, they can, as I kind of mentioned this before, they can unite teams through shared language. You may be looking at a challenge and you may think, how do we talk about this? And if you start to look through the lens of your values, oh, we'll use this framing. We've identified what's important to us. And if we sort of analyze or assess the situation based on our values, then we can begin to talk about it more easily. And then that can drive behavior and promote collaboration and the sense of being in it together with the whole team. And then finally, um, you know, the last two avenues where values, I think, really come to life are navigating what to prioritize and um, how to make decisions, using your values to make sure that you're staying on track, that you're aligned, and you know what um, the, the sort of best example of greatness looks like. So ultimately, values have all of these different places that they can kind of be put to work, and all of my fellow um, panelists are going to tell you a lot more about how they are doing that to um, really illustrate the picture, but uh, this provides sort of the, the foundation for this talk today. Awesome, Shannon, thank you so much for that overview, and um, like I mentioned, we're going to now turn it over to our panelists just to share a little bit more of like what their values look like, how do they come to be, a little bit of that origin story, and then again, how they're adapting in these changing times. Uh, we'll start with Kevin, take it away. Cool, thanks. And so these are our four values. Uh, our first two values are really oriented around why we work, right? Uh, outside of the mission and vision, right? And the last two values are about how we work. And so the first is about kind of yourself. And our first value is dance a little different. And so my co-founder and I are born and raised in the Bay Area. And there's this famous local rapper, Mac Dre, who has the lyric says, in the Bay Area, we dance a little different. And it was all about authenticity, about being yourself, about being comfortable in your own skin. And so that's our first value is like, how do you bring kind of your true self to work? And then in turn, right, uh, allow others to bring, bring their true selves, right? Uh, the second value, building meaningful relationships, uh, really builds off this, right? And so, my co-founder and I have been friends since third grade, and uh, we were uh, roommates after college and, and started this company together. And so, you know, we thought it was, you know, we didn't want to be best friends with everyone, but we wanted to have deep relationships with our employees, uh, with our partners, with our customers, right? And that is all kind of 
easier when you are able to be who you truly are, right? When you're able to dance a little different. So those are the first two. Um, the how values, the how we work values, uh, the first is GSD. So that's just simply get shit done, right? We're a startup. And when you have really big ambitions and goals, there is no substitute for hard work, right? So GSD. Uh, embarrassingly, this was my religion uh, on my Facebook in high school. I'm such a nerd, um, but yes. And uh, our last value actually didn't start off as a value, and we unfortunately had to learn through this. And so, you know, a couple of years ago, it was one of our first big company retreats. And so we had this whole big agenda planned for the team, and our largest com company, a customer, sent out um, about a million dollars in rewards during the retreat. And so needless to say, we served the customer, uh, but had to scrap the entire retreat. We did not set ourselves up for success. And so that was like a very painful learning. But after that, we really thought about, okay, how are we intentional? How do we plan to you know, achieve a certain outcome, right? And so those are our four values. And then you know, talking a little about how the, each of these values are playing out today. And so to set the stage, Blueboard is an experienced business, right? And so at the onset of this COVID-19 situation, we had hundreds of people either traveling the world or scheduled to travel the world, right? And so we had to react very quickly to make sure that all of those people um, you know, were safe, right? And secondly, our main value prop and product is about getting people out and about in the world. And so you know, that feels a little out of touch and maybe, and actually dangerous right now. And so we called a leadership meeting with all our people managers a few weeks ago. And we started off the meeting talking about this idea that I really love around the crucible of leadership. And so what this means, you know, really is that, hey, great leaders uh, are often developed through hardship, right? Going through some rite of passage that often tests them. And when they come out on the other side, they're stronger uh, and more resilient. And so, you know, you know, I said to our team is like, hey, this situation is our crucible, how we conduct ourselves, how we form and kind of create connections as a team is what is going to define us when we come out of this situation. And so we ended that meeting uh, with a section called what does a blue board leader look like today, right? We listed out every single one of our values and provided really simple kind of directional guidance on how to live out these values kind of in crisis mode, if you will, right? And so for dance a little different, right? We, you know, we've built this business being ourselves and we're gonna get through this hardship being ourselves. And so it's important for us to lead with authenticity, right? The second piece was not only is it okay to be vulnerable, but it's actually empowering for yourself and actually for your teammates. And then the last thing around dance a little different was focus on having real conversations. And so not ignoring the situation in the room and making sure that you're checking in with people personally um, and giving them space to make sure that they're okay. For build meaningful relationships, you know, this is simple. It's really about, you know, we said is, hey, we need to support and be there for one another. Tactically, how that kind of played out is, you know, making space, you know, to check in with not only people on your team, but all of the peers in this room. Um, and so that's been, you know, fairly easy and, and really done well. Um, GSD, get shit done. And so given that you know, we're in this business and we're reacting very quickly, we need to figure out what is going to make the most impact in the quickest amount of time and, per, and basically focus on those high leverage activities. Once we decide on doing that, we need to act decisively. We do not need to panic, but we need to execute with a sense of urgency, right? And so that was GSD. And then lastly, we set ourselves up for success. And so like Morgan mentioned, we launched an in-home experience menu, built those partnerships up, launched the product, created the messaging and positioning on our website, on our marketing side, and helped support the sales team in conversations in about a week, right? And so we were doing things really quickly. And in doing things quickly, you know, that, that not all of that is gonna be perfect. And so when it's not perfect, you need to create really tight feedback loops between teams to make sure that as we're getting feedback, as we're collecting data from our customers, our prospects, 
that we're continuing to evolve uh, and iterate um, uh, our, our approach. You know, I saw a, a, a chat come in that said, um, you know, what, what value are we leaning on the most? You know, absolutely. I think the first has been building meaningful relationships. Um, you know, we've been incredibly supportive of one another. Um, Shannon has been doing a great job, you know, making sure that all the team and all the individuals uh, feel supported. And that's kind of a ripple through the organization. So thank you, Shannon, for that, for leading that. Um, but we've been leading on building meaningful relationships. And so, you know, my, my, my advice just at, at a high level, right, is making sure in this time to give your values the space they need uh, to be amplified. You know, and for us, that was sitting down with our leadership team, right, anchoring what great leadership looks like in our values, and then giving simple guidelines. That's proven to be really high leverage and effective for us. Awesome, Kevin. Thank you so much. Um, and Cindy, we loved your question too about, you know, what was the intention behind the language you use? So we'll speak to that as we go forward. Thank you so much for raising that. Um, great. So I'm going to pass it over to Josh next for Culture Amps Values. Thank you. Well, I have to say it's really fun hearing Kevin talk about Blue Board's values because I can feel a lot of the connectivity between your values and Culture Amps. So it's, it's really, um, it's great to hear that. Um, Coltramp is a very strongly values-driven company. Our values are a huge part of our identity. Um, they're a huge part of um, how we make decisions, creates community through creating shared language. Um, it's, uh, it's really foundational. I remember our, our first value is courage to be vulnerable. I remember my interview with Coltramp, people sent out the values ahead of time for me to read. I didn't know it was gonna be a video interview. I was at my parents' house in my childhood bedroom. I sign in and I see everybody else on video and I'm like, oh no, like I have to go on video too. I haven't really like dressed up today and my like stuffed animals from when I was three are behind me, but like turned on the video and was like, courage to be vulnerable and uh, I got the job. So even in that, that initial moment for me, um, they, they really came to life. But again, we have four values and the way our CEO um, Didier would frame it and it's, you know, more true now than ever is that you know, values are not what you wanna be on a good day or what you are willing to hurt for every day. And I think if we think about the, just the current world we're living in, um, those values are so much of what helps us navigate the situation and figure out how we can be culture first during this time. So our four core values are courage to be vulnerable, learning faster through feedback, trust others to make decisions, and amplify others. And so a few components of those values um, are, are the three ones in red, courage to be vulnerable, learn faster through feedback, trust others to make decisions. Those were really generated by a, a smaller group of people, our, our founders earlier in our company's days as the things that they felt were not just table stakes, right? But the things that were critical for how we operate, right? There are a lot of things that are table stakes, like for example, respect that you just need to bring every day. These behaviors are kind of an added layer to that that are super critical for the way we get work done. But once the company grew a little bit, our values are very much alive. And the company realized that there actually was the need for a fourth value. There was an unarticulated something going on at the company. And it felt like we need to put it to paper as a value itself. And that's where Amplify Others came from. It was a kind of employee generated value in terms of how we work together and how we amplify the work that, that we all do. Um, another key component of our values is that they build on each other. We start with courage to be vulnerable, right? Sort of as the, the core component, being open to failure, being open to trying new things, taking risks, saying I'm wrong, asking for help. Um, once you do that, you can then learn faster through feedback, right? You can then um, open yourself up to learning, to knowing that maybe there's a different way to have done things, to maybe see things from a different perspective. And again, for us, it's not just about learning through feedback. It's not just about feedback. It's again, it's, it's the, the component of the full sentence. Feedback in itself could be someone's value, but for us, it's really critical that we're learning through feedback, that we're using it to get better, and also that we're doing it faster, that we're not just waiting three months, six months, a year to learn, but that we're really kind of, um, that, that we're taking it quickly. From there, if we're capable of learning, if we're open to learning faster through feedback, we can get to trust others to make decisions. We are a globally distributed company. Um, we've got people 
from London to, to Australia. Um, there's no one time zone that works for everybody. You know, as we grow as well, decision making kind of flows at different layers. And for us to be effective, um, we really need to be able to trust each other to make decisions. We know that trust comes from vulnerability. And we know that if we're open to learning, we can trust others to make decisions. It's okay if those decisions aren't the same ones we would have made if they're not perfect, but we can trust other people's expertise and their ability to grow and learn. And lastly, if we can do that, we can amplify each other. Um, and so this isn't just, part of it is about giving each other props for jobs well done, um, but a key part of it is also putting other people in positions where they can shine, right? Knowing what people's skills are so that they can actually, um, you know, bring their whole value to, to Coltramp so that they can shine um, and just um, creating those opportunities to support each other again so others can be amplified and just highlighting the work of others. So there's this cumulative component that reinforces itself among our four values. So for us, the other bit that's really important is again, not just saying that these are our values, but identifying specific behaviors that help campers, what we call people who work at Coltramp, um, know that they are actually living those values in real time, no matter who you are. And so there are two components for us. One is golden side behaviors, the other is shadow side. So golden side is kind of the ideal version of what the behavior looks like. But um, if you think of Aristotle saying nothing in excess, right? Anything done a little bit too far to the extreme actually can become a, a shadow side. It can be a strength overplayed essentially. And so for us, it was really important to identify the shadow side behaviors because we want to make sure that we're clear that when we say have the courage to be vulnerable, we don't mean that you have carte blanche to be vulnerable at every moment of the day, right? Or that you should push people outside of their boundaries in a way that can cause emotional damage, right? That's not what we're saying. When we say learn faster through feedback, while we want to seek feedback, we also want to do it in a responsible way that helps us learn. Right? We don't want to use feedback as an excuse just to tell someone you didn't like something. So again, by articulating these shadow side behaviors, um, as well as the golden side, we're really able to get at that nuance of, of what we mean and what we're hoping um, campers do. Um, and we'll talk, I'll talk a little bit more later about how this specifically has, has applied to um, this current situation where some of those behaviors may show up in slightly different ways. Um, but for us, this has been really critical. And I would say the other component of our values is what we call mutuality. So in order for me to live a value, someone else needs to do something, right? So we need to think about what, does, what do we need to do to allow other people to, um, to show a value or to share a value. If someone gives me feedback and I shut them down, um, they're not gonna give me feedback again. And I've sort of, killed the mutuality of that value. That value can't live because of how I responded or how I created space for someone else. So again, I would say that's the other element that I really love at Coltramp that is this mutual responsibility to create the space to live values, not just as the one living it, but as the one possibly receiving it. All right, Josh, thank you so much for going through those. Um, I was going to move through to Lara May unless you had anything else to cover. Thank you so much. Otherwise, cool. All right, Lara May, take it away. Uh, tell us a little bit about LNOS and the values you guys believe in. Yes, so welcome to the family. This is what we say to folks as they join our team. Um, again, we're a small company based out of the Pacific Northwest, um, Seattle or Federal Way specifically. Um, they, we have about 172 part-time and full-time employees. Um, and, you know, I invite you all to learn more about us. Uh, we have a pretty cool IG or Instagram account. So take a look at that. Um, but I do want to point out that we have about three types of employees that I can I do want to point out as, um, I, go through our example. So we have our office staff, which is all of our support um, staff, um, our manufacturing team, our team that really creates and produces our yummy yogurt, then our retail and field marketing team that is consumer facing. So just wanted to tell you guys a quick story. I remember, you know, when I was interviewing for this role, I was pretty excited because I believe the group, this the senior leadership team just finished up and launched our core values, um, which you guys can see in front of you. And one of my questions to our CEO was, 
Hey, so those are pretty words on the wall. Um, what does that mean? Like, how, how does this come to life is actually one of, was one of my first um, questions to him. And he asked me why, why, you know, why, why are you asking this question? And I told him that, you know, being as an HR leader, especially in a single HR type mode where you're the only HR person, you know, it's pretty um, challenging enough to go through HR stuff and employee relations as a sole HR person, but then to be expected to shift and lead and upkeep, you know, um, our, our values every day, that's a hard, that's a tough ask for one person. So my follow-up question was, you know, do our, does our leadership buy into this and do they model this every day? And at that time, last April, um, you know, it was yes. And I'm, in my head, I'm like, okay, we'll see. <laughs> um, because, you know, there's definitely been a lot of pretty words in the past. Um, so moving forward to today is that, you know, these values have shown up in almost every day of, of um, my journey at LNO so far. And it's been great when it's been glorious days of sales or you know we got an instagram call out by an influencer or we see people succeed and etc but it hasn't been tested right when it's been stressful times so now we're in this stress moment and you know are these values going to shine through and i'm just so proud of our leadership team um because it's it's clear, like we're all aligned in terms of, you know, are we doing the right thing? We didn't need to go through our values and hash out each one to see if it still applies. It applies. It, it's, it was very clear. It wasn't about our values aligned and how, you know, it was more of how are we going to create action or how are we going to act based on our values? Um, and we were focused on three objectives, you know, as it relates to the current pandemic right now. It's, you know, our, our priorities, the top one was the health and well-being of our employees. The second was making sure that, you know, we ensured our business continuity. And then third is how do we protect our brand and how do we protect our product? You know, it was pretty crazy that we were ground zero in the United States in terms of where the first case was first um, reported um, here in the Pacific Northwest. So we had to act fairly quickly. Um, and I remember our um, crisis management team, like around the last week of February, first week of March, um, we addressed it. And even when there's questions, if we're compliant, for example, you know, I had reached out to our employment law council and um, I said, hey, we think we're going to make everyone take their temperature at the door. And she was like, no, no, don't do that. That's like a medical exam and you can't do that right now. But we, you know what? We did it anyways because we're like, well, you know, these are the symptoms, you know, how can we prevent? So we acted fairly quickly. Um, and again, it, it wasn't about, are we doing the right thing anymore? It was, how are we going to do the right thing? Um, so next slide, please. Okay, so, you know, again, our values are coming to life every day ever since that last week of February. Um, I'm going to delve in into the go to extra mile and celebrate obsessions a little bit later on. Um, but to treat everyone like family part, one of the things that I've loved is that we've been very honest and transparent about what's happening in terms of what actually the virus is, what we're doing as a company, and then also saying, you know what, things may change. And while, you know, we've launched several programs to support our employees, is that, you know, we don't know what's happening, right? It could be tomorrow, it could be next week that we have to shift. And so we've been communicating that from the very beginning is that this is what we're doing today and you know right now this is um we're gonna do we're gonna do what we say and say what we do right um go to extra mile 
I'm so excited to kind of share with you guys a little bit about this um, because I think for a company our size, um, I'm just so proud of what we're doing on this area. And then the celebrate obsessions piece, because of our different types of employees, um, you know, staying connected is something that I value the most um, and making sure that, you know, we do that. And so we'll go into that later. Um, being responsible to one another, um, again, because of our different types of employees is that we have emphasized so much that you as a person have the responsibility to yourself to your family and to your coworkers um, to keep yourself safe. And so we're always um, saying, hey, you need to wash your hands, do the social distance, you know, follow stay at home orders, et cetera. And, you know, while we are giving the foundation is that, hey, you as an employee, you as an individual can help us get through this by doing these, these things. And then grow together. Um, I don't think there's any question across any business right now that business is going to change. Culture is going to change. How we connect as humans are going to change after this is over. Um, is that now we're challenging each other. Okay, our business models are going to change. How are we going to do that? Think about how we're going to sample our product, for example, right? I don't know when Costco is going to do their food samples again. And if they do, do they want to reach out, you know, from one of our employees to taste our product? So how do we, um, how do we adapt? And so those are some of the ways that we're, you know, I think that we're growing together right now. Um, so again, welcome to the family and I'll be sharing more later on and how we're doing um, when we say go to extra mile and celebrate obsession. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, I'm going to pass it over to Tia to walk through her values as well. Take it away. Thank you. So as every other um, organization or panelist, I guess, on, on, um, on this call, our values are at the core of everything that we do. And they're showcased throughout our enti entire employee experience, um, kind of as Shannon alluded to a little bit earlier. Some examples of that, um, we ask behavioral value-based questions as part of our process. Um, our new hires know the values from day one. It's part of their onboarding. Um, our employee recognition program is tied to our values and they are, our values are also baked into our feedback culture. You actually tie, when you leave feedback for someone in the system, you tie that feedback to a value. So um, you can see the values here on the screen. Um, and you know, so those are a few examples, right? But every, every inch of our employee experience, we have weaved woven um, those values in. Um, so on the next slide, what I'd really like to do is talk about how we've leaned on our values, especially over these last several weeks. Um, first and foremost, it's just been fascinating for me to watch our values come to life over um, during this time. And I think the most fulfilling part is how naturally it's happening. Um, and again, I can give you some examples here. So from, from people perspective, um, and this is more on a personal note. So within the people development team, as soon as events started to unfold, we immediately reviewed our scheduled projects and our initiatives to determine relevance. We asked ourselves, is, is this important right now? Is it relevant and meaningful to the organization to roll out this particular project? Um, we knew that we needed to be focused on supporting and educating our, our employees and our managers. So we adjusted our roadmap to do that. We pushed out some very important um, initiatives from our calendar um, so we could focus on what's happening right now within the organization with, across the world. Um, from a collaboration perspective, we are shifting how we collaborate in a new fully remote workforce because collaboration, um, collaboration is built into our DNA. It's part of who we are as an organization. This shift really seemed to happen seamlessly oh, we're not gonna be in the office together or on site at a customer location together. Okay, well, let's all turn on video on our, our conference calls. You know, that was something that we did um, in pockets across the organization, but now it seems like it's just the norm for everybody to have those cameras on so we can feel that connection with one another. We are also leveraging uh, Microsoft Teams and other collaboration tools 
in some really creative and fun new ways. And I'll talk about that a little bit later on in the presentation. Um, from a knowledge perspective, so as business disruption started happening back when air travel was still a thing, we wanted to understand how our employees were feeling. We needed to get a pulse, right? And Culture Amp actually developed an emergency response survey. And as soon as we saw that, we rolled it out the next day. It was crucial for us to hear from our employees and how they were feeling. Um, and having that insight really let us know where we needed to focus our attention. Our people services team has been sending out frequent communications to employees. And during the first few weeks, we were doing communications almost daily. And these were things like uh, an, an update from our CEO, uh, mental health resources, and then more recently, some fun stuff like tips for having fun while you're working from home because we're all, still get, we're all starting to get a little stir crazy, especially with those kids at home, right? Um, from a balance perspective, work-life integration. If this wasn't a thing in 2019, it's definitely gonna be a thing in 2020. Um, we have, like I just mentioned, kids home from school. We have spouses or roommates that are trying to work from home while you're trying to work from home. Um, while on a video call, you might see a kid jump up and pop into your lap um, or hear the dogs in the background barking. And we have to be okay with these things, right? It's all about balance and integration right now. Um, and then integrity. So last, but definitely not least, um, our CEO and president opened our all hands call meeting that we had last week with a very strong and comforting message for our employees. Um, they said, we are here, leadership is here, we are available, and we are encouraging you to reach out to us with questions. So just knowing, seeing the care that came from the executive team um, just speaks to integrity to me. Um, and then they also, in that same call, outlined all the steps that they're taking to proactively address how COVID-19 is going to affect our business and how they're going to protect our, our collaborative family. So I think, you know, kind of to sum this up, um, this is new territory for all of us. And I think in the weeks that as they continue to unfold and we're, we're learning new things as we go, um, we're going to continue to be flexible as an organization. We're going to adjust. We're going to be going to adapt. Um, and do what we need to do to best support our employees. And I think our values have really um, shown through uh, during this time. Sophia, thank you so much. Um, we're gonna be mindful of time. I wanna jump right into our show and tell section, if you will. So we're gonna hopefully get back to some of the questions that were received from the audience, just as a preview. Thank you, Jennifer, Stacy, and Harriet for sending all of those. We will hopefully jump back into them. Um, but yeah, we want to ultimately walk you through some programs that you can hopefully emulate at your own organizations that really help to bring um, values to life during this time. I'm going to pass it uh, back over to Shannon to kick us off. Sure thing. I'm actually just going to highlight one here that, um, you know, Kevin told you about a variety of ways in which our values have come to life um, in terms of, you know, really gathering around, getting shit done, and um, setting ourselves up for success in the remote environment. So um, I'll focus on one that I've been focusing on, which is building meaningful relationships, and um, share that one thing we did uh, during this kind of uh, sudden everybody goes remote era is um, transitioning what would have often happened in casual coffee breaks or lunch dates or um, just, you know, sidebars while people were sitting at their desks into an online version. We've been using a tool called Donut that matches up two of our employees via Slack. It's a very lightweight integration. Um, and what's expected is that those two employees just get together and have a chat. They can talk about anything. We provide some fun prompts for them that are like, learn a TikTok dance or give a tour of your house, like cribs or different things like that. And then, um, you know, our employees are able to forge new bonds that aren't necessarily work related. They're not around work projects, but they're around their, you know, humanity and their personal experience. And then um, some of them choose to share them with everybody in the Slack channel. Others, um, you know, just have a lovely time and, and connect with somebody new. But for us, that was just like a, a new way of um, really tackling this value and um, taking it digital. And we've really enjoyed using Donut for it. So um, I'll hand it back over to um, our next up, um, which is Josh. 
Hi. Well, uh, at Coltramp, um, you know, thinking of the current situation specifically, one way that our value of having the courage to be vulnerable has come to life is our CEO, Didier, does um, daily updates via video um, to update the whole company. And he, you know, they're, they're not, um, he, he's vulnerable in them. He's honest about some of his own feelings and some of the things he feels like he's seeing in the personal components. Um, and it's been hugely impactful in um, setting tone and sending the message to the company in terms of like, it's okay that, you know, this can be, you know, a, a scary time for people in a lot of different ways. There's a lot that's unpredictable. The other thing we've done is uh, we took our, our own emergency response template and we are learning faster through feedback by getting into a weekly cadence of surveys that is helping our, uh, our organization both learn where our people are and what they're feeling, but also quickly identify things we might adapt um, in the upcoming week to actually um, to, to help us navigate the situation. Um, the other thing we've done, or one other thing we've done is just put together a quick blog, again, low lift, but um, talk a little bit about how during this time, what some of the value behaviors might look like in different ways specific to what people are feeling now. So for example, with learning faster through feedback, because situation is changing so fast at times, um, we, are, we, we have an opportunity to lean into that value to um, kind of learn more quickly and to create that mindset or trusting people to make decisions um, when everyone is working from home now, right? There's a lot more work that's not quite as visible. So how do we trust each other in those circumstances to allow work to get done? So again, making it not just about our values, but being really specific in what behaviors um, people, people can know and lean on um, within the values. And then lastly, um, you know, we, we talk about values, behaviors at an individual level, but we also think about it from a systems and process level. So for example, we're launching an internal events calendar at a global level so that campers don't have every event on their personal calendar, but can see where they might connect with others. And in having the conversation around how we're gonna set that up, we used our values to actually say, okay, well, what does trust others to make decisions look like for this calendar? How can we use this calendar to amplify others? Um, and really leaning into them to make decisions for how we'd actually set it up, set up permissions within that calendar, um, you know, how we'd share it out, et cetera. Um, and so again, integrating values at a process level and at a systems level is something that we find to be really impactful just for um, helping bring them to life, not just at individual levels, but across the organization. Awesome, Josh, thank you so much. Um, next up, I believe, is Lara May. Yeah, so again, I'm looking, I'm excited to share with you guys what we're doing. Again, just keep in mind that we have uh, three types of employees, our office team, um, our production facility, and our retail and field marketing teams. Um, so definitely have had to think through and be very thoughtful about how we launch certain programs, um, how we connect with folks from working at home versus on site, and then we're also spread across six different states. So not, our, not only are we in Washington in terms of employees, we have employees in Oregon, California, Texas, Maryland, and Illinois. Um, so I think you know, one of our values that is extremely like all up into action right now is going the extra mile. Um, so we've created a crisis assistance program for our part-time retail and field marketing teams. Um, so what we're doing is, you know, in the meantime, for the next eight weeks, um, is that we've provided a 80% um, crisis, I guess, crisis pay, um, for lack of a better term. And basically we are providing 80% of their pay based on their estimated hours um, for the next, eight weeks, we knew that the unemployment system um, in each state was going to be overwhelmed as we're seeing today. And so we hope that um, this, this would help provide, again, um, a sense of um, just relief, you know, again, it's the financial well-being, not just physically, not just mentally, um, definitely financial well-being as well. Additionally, we knew that our um, 
folks at the facility, you know, they're still making yogurt. We are, you know, we thank goodness we're an essential business in which our employees can come to our, our factory and make our yummy yogurt. And also, you know, the grocery stores um, are still loving our ordering our yogurt, thankfully. Um, but we wanted to acknowledge our hourly employees. So we've given them $2 extra per hour as a weekly bonus. Um, whoever is working there based at our food manufacturing facility. One of the other things that we also did was we had temp, a temp agency that was helping us out already and providing additional san cleaning and sanitation support. Um, we challenged them to say, hey, you know, some of your employees overheard us talk about this loyalty pay. And actually some of them were like, you know, am I eligible and unfortunately I, I couldn't you know I couldn't extend it to them so what we did is we challenged this temp agency to go in dollar for dollar and so I'm happy to say that they agreed and so our temp workers also receive that two dollar per hour bonus um, we're also looking into appreciation gifts for our exempt team right now because we do have about um, we have about 10 um, exempt employees on salary that also physically need to be on site to ensure the safety um, of others as well as, you know, we need to keep producing our yogurt. Um, another thing that we're doing, and I think we've done this well um, outside of the pandemic, is that the communication, I, I think that we've just been on top of it. You know, we've had, um, our CEO, we had a town hall um, on Tuesday, this past Tuesday afternoon, in which we addressed the entire company. But even before then, especially when we knew that we needed to close down our, you know, our Pike Place yogurt scoop shop, Pike Place Market yogurt scoop shop, um, we held one-on-one -on -one or we held group one-on-ones with our CEO and, um, making sure that we spoke with our impacted employees first and right away we we didn't let anyone linger on and wonder what was going to happen um again because of the different types of um, employees that we had you know we wanted to make sure that everyone was getting the information email video print it out you know create different portals um make phone calls to people to make sure that they received it um you know we we have a multilingual workforce you know english spanish korean french tagalog um we've um, you know we've um, reached out to interpreters as well to help us uh we do have a bilingual spanish staff um but you know korean isn't a part of our um a part of our talent pool so we needed to reach out and get an interpreter to make sure that they understood what we expected them during this time as well. Um, we talked about this yesterday, back in Fe uh, the beginning of March or last week of February, you know, it seemed like we were overdoing it with all of the extra cleaning supplies. Um, you guys can see on our, um, on this slide is that, yeah, we have a guard shack before anyone can come to our facility to, to take your temperature at every single door inside outside up the stairs down the stairs there's you know sanitation or cleaning hand sanitizer wipes um and we're so serious about this social distancing even at work um you can see like we spread you know chairs apart during our town hall meetings um there's i, I should have put this in but um our lunchroom our break room i mean we've separated the tables um, to make sure that people are away from each other. Um, and as we're making yogurt, if you're next to a person, we have all of the PPE available. So um, again, we're being extra with it, but we wanna make sure that people feel safe coming to work, feel safe working with each other. Um, and then um, the last thing I want to point out, we provided additional mental health resources for our team. Um, so not everyone, you know, was eligible to either elect into our health um, medical plan with our provider, um, but we did provide an extra mental health app that anyone can um, download to help them get through. 
So next slide, please. Um, so this is a fun one, is how do we stay connected? Again, we have employees everywhere <laughs> across the United States. Um, we have um, folks in our manufacturing plant working for home. So how do we stay connected? So one of our values is celebrate obsessions. If you ever um, interview with us, you'll get the question, you know, what is your obsession? Um, and so these have been fun for me to do. Even though we've talked about it before, um, we're doing this extra, doing it weekly, is delving into people's obsession. Um, our first one, was you know share your obsessions so all these pictures you know i gathered people sent to me and um, we asked them what is your obsession and explain to us um i highlighted in that uh yellow box right there our winner her obsession was traveling with her mom um and it was pretty cool you know the different um or, or, or how she explained it to us and you know getting to know everyone a little bit better especially through this time um, and not always talking about work um you know i think has uplifted others and you know again remain connected um this week's contest uh, we're doing a virtual potluck and our, our ceo is basically making us bring our potluck dish when you know down the future so whatever people are um, submitting as their virtual potluck, they're gonna have to bring that once we get back together again later on. So celebrating our obsession is definitely a lifeline right now, I think for all of us, you know, um, because it takes our mind away right now from what's currently happening outside. Absolutely. Um, Laramie, thank you so much. I'm gonna do just a quick jump ahead. We're gonna come right back to Tia, but I wanted just to share quickly um, our Sherm P to C in case people have to jump off. Um, that is 202SHFT. And there's a few resources as well. Anna um, posted the resilience survey. Um, we'll also uh, drop a line for our next webinar if you guys can join in two weeks. But we're gonna to jump to Tia again to walk through um, two ways that she's bringing her values to life before we jump off today. Great, thank you. I will try and be quick for you. Um, so I actually sat down with a colleague of mine when I was preparing for this call to brainstorm some of the new programs that we've put in place over the past several weeks. And I was actually really shocked at all of the different initiatives that we currently have going on. Uh, as I mentioned before, we've definitely seen employees using more video. Um, the collage you actually see on this slide is from St. Patrick's Day. Our president had sent a note out and challenged everybody to get creative and have fun. It was amazing to see so many teams jump in to participate. Um, we are also having virtual happy hours and theme days. So who can come with the best um, bedhead or craziest socks? We're doing fun trivia games like Pictionary. Um, and of course we still have work to do, so which is important, right? But we should all be absolutely building in a respite here and there to take our minds away from all of this heaviness that we're seeing across the media channels right now. Um, and the best part of many of these great ideas that, that we're seeing, they weren't coming from a special fund committee that we pulled together. I mentioned this earlier, but they were all happening organically and proactively in different departments and teams across the company. And to me, this just means that our, our managers and our employees understand the many ways that collaboration can show up at work. Um, and one of the real surprises that had surfaced is that our employees have become coaches to traditionally office-based customers, helping them to navigate remote work. Um, and our consultants have found really creative ways to keep long virtual meetings engaging, sometimes two and three day long architect sessions engaging by integrating different Q&A sessions. They're creating bingo cards so they can leverage those throughout the week, just add, adding in more interaction. Um, and then last on this screen, we use Microsoft Teams internally. Um, so we have a Teams page called Collabi Cruise. And this is just a fun way that we share and connect with others. You can see a screenshot here of some of the channels that we have. Um, I have to say these team pages are getting a lot more use in the last several weeks. Folks are getting more engaged. We have channels such as Kudos to celebrate successes. We have a pet shop to show off your furry kids. We have collabi lols to share funny memes and videos um, but we've also seen some new channels emerge over the last few weeks to continue to support 
employees in this new environment. So we have a COVID-19 update channel. We have an online office channel. So show what your home office setup is and what are your must have gadgets and accessories um, to share those with others. And then we have Collabi Cares to highlight different ways that we can give back within our communities. So if you go to the next slide, I'll talk just really quickly about um, how we've really seen knowledge come into play. So managers play such a critical role in fostering engagement across the company and leaders being present in a crisis like this is imperative. So it's, it's just so important that you empower your managers by giving them the tools and the resources to navigate because this is uncharted er territory for all of us right now. So what we did at Collaborative is we created a COVID-19 manager resources portal on SharePoint. It's a one-stop shop for our managers. It outlines um, some relaxed approaches that we're taking on different HR um, procedures, such as for sick time. Um, we are no longer requiring a doctor note. At the, you know, we kind of put that on pause. We have unlimited PTO, but we wanted to be more flexible. So we're kind of pulling back on the, on, you know, we don't need as many approvals on stuff like that. Um, this resource portal also provides mental health resources. There are considerations on how to best support your employees and keep them engaged. And there's some one-on-one -on -one guides in there for our managers that not only highlight why one-on-ones are so important, but also tips for having a critical conversation. And then we've also given them a lot of templates um, to provide questions to ask. So whether or not it's an ad hoc check-in with somebody to just say, hey, how are you doing? Or a remote work readiness call to say, hey, I know you're used to being in the office. Now you're fully remote. Um, here's a series of questions that you can ask to, to that employee to make sure that they feel prepared to be effective at home. And then in addition to updating the resource portal each week, we hold meetings with our managers so they know where to go for information and we give them the opportunity to ask questions. Um, and we have senior leadership participating in a lot of those calls and available. Um, so I'll kind of close out just by saying, you know, everything that we've outlined in these two slides, obviously are gonna to continue to evolve and I'm really hopeful to see more programs um, such as these being rolled out. Wonderful, Tia, thank you so much. And um, I know we stayed a few minutes over. We didn't get to questions from chat, Barbara, but I really appreciate all that came through. Um, we'll actually share some of the questions with our panelists and the chance that they can reach out afterwards. Um, but yeah, like I mentioned, a lot of amazing events coming up. Um, stay in touch with CultureAmp as well as Blueboard as we have more and more webinars coming soon. Um, send someone a recognition note today if you're feeling inclined. And yeah, just a huge thank you to all of our speakers. Thank you to Tia, to Lara May, to Shannon and Kevin and Josh. I um, appreciate all of you being here um, as well as our over 300 people who joined us live. Um, have a wonderful day everyone and we will see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>